Hello. What's up, man? Hey, what, what do how's I do? it going, Tony? Is this, it, I'm right on time, right? Oh, you're perfect. Can you see me? I can't, not yet. Okay. Boom. Can you see me now? Not yet. Oh, 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 wait. Boom. Oh, there, there it we. is. Mama, what's up? Oh, my God. Let me give you, let me give you the beautiful view of, uh, of uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Oh, my God, my favorite city. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's even better today. It's all gloomy and rainy outside. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. So actually, in Phoenix, Arizona, it's also gloomy and rainy. Surprisingly. Oh. Look at that. Oh my God! I can't see it. It's all just clouds and. Oh. Yeah. It's oh. cloudy and foggy and just yeah. <laughs> I used to live in New Jersey, and I remember there would be entire weeks where it would be like that. It was so depressing. Oh yeah. Well, it was. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty. Uh, sunny yesterday. What's going on, man? I want to go get my water. Oh, all good. Yeah. What's up, man? Not much. I'm. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Happy to be talking to you. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm good. I mean, uh, what did I do last? I did a the stress factory in uh, what's this place? Uh, yeah, Bridgeport. Yeah, nice, nice. How is the stress factory? I haven't. I it's dope. You know, they got one. He's got one in uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, and they got this one in Bridgeport. Good. Oh, nice, nice. And you're gonna go tonight too, right? Yeah, we got uh two shows, but you know they're early, like six and eight. Cause gotta be out of there by uh. Oh, because of a by... curfew. What is it like out there? What are y'all doing out there? Oh, dude, nobody believes in coronavirus over here. We're just all shooting pistols and uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's no, it's it's. Uh, I mean, at the clubs and everything, the clubs are still open. I, you're coming to House of Comedy next week. They, um, mm -hmm. I think most of the clubs, they're just socially distancing and everything, but I don't think they're adjusting any times. There's no curfew or anything. Oh, so I guess, yeah, I guess the shows would be like regular times, eight and 10. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 exactly. I, I was going to ask real oh, quick, is there, uh, um, is there a TV on in the background? Is it? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Is it? Let me see. <laughs> oh. I don't know why somebody would have the TV on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay maybe it was i don't know yeah now that i look yeah it was oh man it was it was nice background noise i like it i mean i yeah. usually have the tv on in the back because it's, it's saturday morning tv it's like what's it called nbc's the more you know oh nice with it with a, the, the the woman dylan dryer she you know she goes all up she's like all over the world Talking about animals and wildlife, it's like for kids, but it's, I love it, you know. Oh, so, nice, nice. <laughs> man. I was gonna ask, what do you, so I know you're traveling, you're on tour now, you're gonna be coming to Phoenix next week or this week when this comes out. Um, what do you like to do in your downtime, especially now that there's a pandemic and it's, you can't really go outside and. But like my thing is I, I ride bicycles, so, uh, just you know, like, and most cities have those um, those uh, bikes. So I just I just get on those bikes and just I like to just ride around the city and get lost. You know, not get lost, lost, but just like wow, look at this, because it always helps, man. When when you got some local knowledge, because um, you know, like when you when you're the headliner, the MC and the feature act are usually local, and and they kill you with like just local stuff they could talk about oh you guys must be from such and such and the crowd laughs and like oh man what they talking about so you got you know yeah you gotta do your homework and say all right you know because you got your stuff which is good everywhere but then you gotta have something that's you know right there for them oh. i don't know how people do this you know how people always do the zoom like you you you're right on you're right in 
I can. Oh, I can. like perfectly centered. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah, I like always see people and they got it and then they got the they got their books and their little statues in the back. I'm like, how did how they do that shit? This, okay, is, this yeah. is actually just a virtual background right here. This isn't even oh, real. This one is too. <laughs> you oh, see that? You see that vent behind me? Oh yeah. Right there. Right there. Yeah. That's a killer. Because you know sometimes in hotel rooms, I can put like the ice bucket full of water. Yeah. So when the heat comes, it'll just kind of humidify the room. But see that one's up up there. Then the heat is blasting, but it, it, it's the, the heat that dries your eyeballs out. You oh, dry my. Out. So I thought, what I thought, oh, go ahead. What I do is I just uh, cut the heat on so it's hot and then I wake up and then I cut it off. So I just do that in like two hour intervals. Oh, that's so smart. Cause I, I thought I was the only person I would, we have the heat on now in Phoenix, which is embarrassing. Cause it's like 60 mm -hmm. degrees and we're freezing, but yeah. I, it's, uh, we're turning the heat on and my eyes are just drying out so much. Yeah. And I thought my wife is fine. So I was wondering yeah. if I was the only one that this happened. No, sometimes it's like my eyeballs won't roll in my head. I'm like, oh man, I gotta go. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, I hate that. I'm going to try that though. Just do every two hours. Give the eyes but just put, put some water near the vent or whatever where your heat comes from and it'll just humidify the room yeah and then yeah your, your, your eyes won't be stuck looking at the zoom now i can see how dirty my glasses are <laughs> no you're good they're beautiful you know what i'll fix it in post too i'll just scrub it up we've got photoshop and everything <laughs> But hey, I love I love what you're bringing. This is called a comedy advice podcast. So you're already bringing the advice, bringing the comedy. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So and just to give you a little bit of a lowdown of how it's going to work, we'll talk for a little bit. I'll, um, the audience will get to hear a little bit about you, and then we'll go into some advice from some questions that some fans sent in. So I don't know. Are you a good advice giver, Tony? I don't know. I guess. You know. <laughs> Yeah, that's the know. kind of confidence we need to go into this. That's perfect. <laughs> oh man! And said that people say, "Oh man, I don't know what I would have done without your advice." I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh man. Well, let me. I just spilled. I have my humidifier, and I just spilled water on my mouse pad and mouse. But perfect. We're good. All right. Well. Hey, I know I'm honored to have you on the pod. I've been watching a lot of your stand up from the early days up until more recently. I'm really excited to see you in Phoenix uh, this week. I was going to ask a little bit about because I know that when uh, Dave Chappelle, he accepted his uh, his Mark Twain award, you were the first person he recognized and saying that you were his influence because you were the first one that he saw doing everything absolutely right which was amazing and awesome to hear and uh as i were watch as i was watching on youtube some of your clips from earlier times people were saying uh oh did can you not hear me anymore i can eat i can eat but i hear i'm hearing you out loud i'm like what's going on with the earbuds oh you know what are you on your laptop well it's kind of like a laptop it's an ipad Oh, okay, cool. If if on the lower left hand side, do you see that microphone icon? A yeah. And it'll say mute under it. I don't see it. No, oh, I don't. Okay. Have don't worry oh, about okay. it. I can hear you. I can hear you fine. It's just yeah. I just because I, I was like, wow, I can hear him out loud. <laughs> so I have I'm a good. really sonorous voice, so that might be also just me, but. If you can, and I'm really not good with technology, so yeah. Oh, it, it's all. If you can hear me fine, I I, I can hear, hear you great. Yeah, I can hear you great too. Oh, nice, and, good. And, and, and was, I was, uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask. I mean, I um, first off, I know that you and Dave are friends, and so I was gonna ask, did you expect him to say that, or or uh, no. have an idea that he was gonna say it? Nope. It was. I mean, if you watch, if you watch it, I was just a surprise to everybody else. I know. I, was, I got to see your face. The the smile was huge, and it was really cool to see. And um, I mean, how did it feel when he did say that, not expecting it to come out? 
Well, uh, I tell people like, uh, you ever been to the airport and you go to your gate, like you, you go to your gate and they say, um, the flight's not gonna leave for like another 30 minutes. So you go, okay, most people just sit there at the gate, but not me. I walk around, go to the bookstore, whatever. Just, and like, you might be in a bookstore looking at magazines or something. And then they say over the loudspeaker, they say, you know, uh, you know, Anthony Woods uh, report to gate, such and such. And you look at the person next to you who don't even know you and go, did they say my name? Like that, that's how I felt. Because <laughs> the, the woman I was sitting next to, because there was like three open seats. Uh -huh. So the usher had me sit next to her and she seemed a little uncomfortable. And I was like, I can just sit over here. And I moved just before y'all say anything. I moved and then the yeah. usher, one of the ushers came back and said, no, sit right there. That's your, so I'm, I'm thinking, I'll get some more people coming. But it wasn't. It was where I was sitting was right bang on camera. And, and you know, they was right there. I'm like, oh. And I was kind of confused. I'm like, when he did that, should I like put my hand up or should I stand up or like I just like that, you know? And so I'm like, all right. So gotcha. everybody knew. Yeah. But it was a lot of people in the theater going, who's who's Tony Woods? Because <laughs> I didn't stand up and go, all right, yeah, I'm over here. All right. But That's, it was a, I'm, I'm it glad was you got in the right seat too, so they didn't point the camera at the wrong person because that would have been yeah. disastrous. But that's that's great, man. And I wanted to ask too. I mean, I know that you. Uh, I wanted to ask how you got into comedy in the first place. How how did it end up coming to be that you started thinking, oh, comedy's something I think I can do? No, I, as a matter of fact, I didn't. Um, uh, when I was when I was in the military, a friend of mine. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was when Eddie Murphy was on the cover of Time magazine. He had yeah. his hat, his red baseball cap on, head on backwards, and he was like. Like that, yeah. So, cover and and he just said you could do this, and, and I'm I'm like you know I was thinking like do what I didn't know he was talking about comedy. I think it just meant like I could be on the cover of the magazine. Like I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could do that too. Look, <laughs> yeah. <in the> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty right. He, <laughs> no, he was saying you know, he's saying you know at work every day, boom. He said this, and then and then he was he rattled off his his favorite comedians, and and he's you know he was ooh, he was like thirty. So at that time he was like to me a senior citizen, and he was like you know I've been all over the world. I met very funny people. He says and he named some, and, he, and he, I was in his top five, and and that was like Damn. Richard Pryor, uh, you know Bill Cosby. Uh, 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 Eddie and uh, some, you know, just like all people you know. And he said, and you, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> he went as far as to sign me up for open mic night in DC. Wow. And, and I was gonna ask at that time, you were in the Navy, you were a oro maxo facial assistant? I say I was a dental technician. Like, <laughs> okay. nobody, I was, that's what, I, that's, that's what your rate is, dental technician and like whatever else you, whatever, whatever else you got beside it is what you got beside it. You know, got some it. like some, some guys make rank and they don't even actually do their particular job. Huh? You, yeah. Like, like you may be, you, your, your thing may be like boiler technician. That's one of the guys who work in the hull of the ship or whatever, but you've been, working for the fire department or something like that and but you know when it's time to take the test for your job boom, 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 you move up and and then huh. you get to point somebody you actually have to do some boiler technician stuff you're like i don't know man i don't know <laughs> go, oh, yeah. shit. but you're right as you know yeah but you know. And, um, <laughs> as you know because you because you kind of use where you need it you know and, got, and got it got it. but on paper you're the boiler technician or the oral maxillofacial yeah. surgical assistant okay okay like say say uh say say you're a radio personality but yeah. you also host parties at clubs you do this you do that so that's the, that other stuff is just the extra uh training that i had but when it comes down to it say oh here's a dental tech now what he now what he do as a dental tech it's just extra stuff so and anyway this guy put me 
he, he, he told me about the place. That's where I started. Uh, it's called a comedy cafe in DC. That's where all uh, me and uh, Dave and Martin Lawrence, a lot of us started there. Um, and uh, he, I went down there, and I'm, I'm there. I put my I put my name on the list. And to me, man, that was, that's my first live comedy show. It was like the funniest stuff I'd ever seen. I'm like, wow, these guys should be on TV, man. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember they, they called my name. Yeah. yeah. And what'd you do? I did what I'm doing right now. I sat there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it goes, is Tony Woods? I'm like, who is this? Tony Woods. But I said, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, hey, you're not going up there, buddy. I tell you that, that stage's on fire. <laughs> and I remember that the next day, Shit. the next day everybody's like, you know, cause he told everybody what I was going to do. Damn. And then, and everybody's like, how'd it go? I'm like, yeah, it was great. Yeah, cool. Like that. And and we're in the lounge. And he goes, how'd it go? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's like, wow. Were you funny? I'm like, yeah, it was good. Yeah, was good. yeah they love it. <laughs> like this is just this lying. And then um <laughs> that that same day, he just he just just me and him, he goes, he said, Man, why the fuck didn't you go up? I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, <laughs> he said, he's like, if you, he said, if you had done it. That would have been the first thing you talked about. You, we wouldn't have had to ask you if you did it. You would have came and go, ah, I killed it. No, ah, I, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. And he was, he was like, uh, he's like, you like, like he, he said he had known people who could sing really well. And then they go and they go, hey, like a band's playing. Like, Anybody know this song? And like they got a guy and they go, go, man, go. A guy who sings all day long. He said, but he wouldn't. And he, he's the one who told me how terrifying it was. I'm like, tell me, because I wasn't moving <laughs> like that. But all of those guys who I saw uh, that day, like one of them is Kevin Lee. He's a juggler, magician, comedian. Yeah, and I remember I saw him. He was he was new then, and he, you know, you see jugglers on television. They like juggle when they do all this. He yeah. dropped oh, he dropped the bowling ball. Man, I, I remember thinking that that is the best. I've, you know, I'm like, wow, yeah, that's good. He, <laughs> he dropped it like, because you hope you never expect them to drop it. But yeah, he he was new, but he but he don't drop the ball no more. But he dropped the ball. But to me, that was like, now that is funny. <laughs> uh, wait, so he did he not try to do it on purpose for comedy, or did he? <laughs> no, he was. What I didn't understand is it was open mic night. Everybody was an amateur. But oh my God. I was more amateur than that than the amateurs, so I'm like, because mm, to me they were good. They were oh really good. man! So, and I was gonna ask when you first went up, did you have your written material, or were you just like, I'm gonna go up and well, say something? I didn't, I didn't actually go up until like uh, three years after what I'm telling you now. So, I when and I that, did go, oh man, I had all of this stuff written down that I was gonna say. Uh huh, and 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 it was because of your ex-wife at the time, right? Where she said, "You know what? I'm finally gonna see you." Yeah. Okay. Well, what happened? What happened with that is, I said, "I'm gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna do it." And I, and I went down. It's same thing, you know. How they say Tony Woods, <laughs> but yeah, and it was me and a, yeah, it was me and a buddy of mine, and uh, so we 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 were going. I just like kept chickening out, but it was also Thursday night. And then in a nightclub back in the day, it was ladies night. And, you know, and I'm like, this is like a free night. Like, did I, you know, why, like, we like, why waste this in a comedy club? Let's get out of here. <laughs> and um, so the next morning she would always go, how'd it go? I'm like, what's good? She said, what would you talk about? So I would just remember a snippet or something that made me laugh. I'm like, I said, and I remember her brushing her teeth. Instead of laughing, she goes, that was funny. <laughs> like who? Like oh shit, <laughs> oh shit. So after maybe yeah, after maybe about a, a month of that, a, about a month of free Thursday nights, one one Thursday morning, she was yeah no one Wednesday morning, she says, guess what? She says all the execs are going on some kind of a trip, a seminar, or something like that. So. I don't have to work on Thursday. No, I don't have to work Friday. Yeah. So you know what? I'm gonna take the baby to your mom's and 
going down there with you to see you do comedy. Like, oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Oh shit, man. Oh man, do you know how stressful that that was? A very stressful two days, but you know. So me, her, and a buddy of mine went down there, and so this time. Oh, oh, this is another thing. Like while we're watching, you know, a couple of comedians went up and she was like, that's your joke. <laughs> you know, it was like stuff that I had told her, like snip. She said, he's doing a joke. <laughs> I'm like, nah, what, I said, what it is, the comedians kind of help each other out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, you tell one line, man, you got to keep telling a new line. But anyway. You're good so at they, it, though. You're good. Keep going with the, that's good. And they finally, they finally called me, and and that was a long walk, dog. My heart was pounding, and I went up there. And I couldn't remember nothing, and I said, I remember saying, "Hey, you guys look good." You know, people clapping like you guys smell good. They laughing, <laughs> and then, yeah, and I'm just standing there like, "What?" I couldn't remember none of that stuff I written down, and yeah. my leg shaking a little bit, and there was a dude in the front with big stomach he goes look his leg is shaking i'm like hey your stomach is shaking but look man <laughs> and then I, and I said don't worry man i used to be fat too which made everybody laugh and i said i said my man you can't tell now but i used to be a whopping 70 pounds right <laughs> I, said, 70. I, I said but i was this tall i was you know i was in second grade and, and then and just it just went from there and i just i told a story about when I set uh, the bed on fire when I was little. And it just, I was just telling the story like I always do and people were screaming, laughing. And then I saw that light come on because I didn't finish, didn't wrap up or nothing like that. It just like, it was dead in the middle of ah, And I seen the light come on, I'm like, my name is Tony Bush tonight, boom. <laughs> yeah, like, oh my like God. I can't. I can't believe I did this. And then and then as I'm people are shaking my hand, people are clapping and you know, and the and uh Martin Lawrence and uh Pierre, two comedians, you know, they they walk through, yo yeah. man, good set, man. Yeah. Then all of the comedians were like, Well, what clubs do you work out of? Blah, blah, blah. Like they wouldn't believe uh, these are all the other comedians that that I didn't that that was my first time. Like they were like, nah, you did it. And then I remember I sitting, you know, and and and, and I remember Vance, that's my buddy, he go, I told you, man, you could do this. Right? Which kind of what? Like, yeah, and she was like, you <laughs> anyway, she was like, Yeah, you you were like one of the best ones. You need to ask them to start paying you. Cause you know, on the list they have they said from the amateur side, from the pro side. Yeah. And then he said to me you need to yeah get paid <laughs> yeah and just yeah so i had to i walked back to the bar area where all the comedians like the the working comedians were hanging out the amateurs had to sit at their tables yeah and but i walked back then where all the big dogs were and i I met a guy named Andy Evans. Andy Evans, like, we called him the Godfather at DC Comedy. I'm like, and I walked back there with so much confidence. I'm like, yeah, man, what's up, man? He said, hey, good set, but I said, yeah, man, so how I get paid up here? He said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He didn't laugh. Shit. He didn't laugh. He said, huh? I said, yeah, yeah, I get paid up here. He said, hold on, I'm going to get somebody. <laughs> like that. I'm like, oh, shit, this is easier than I thought. Oh, man. <laughs> um, see, because it was like a landing where all the comedians went out there and smoked weed and smoked cigarettes and just talked about road shit. Mm -hmm. And he, he brought a few of them. I go, he said, "Oh yeah, yeah." Um, to, oh no, no, what you what you ask me again? Like that, right? And I said, "Um, I was just, you know, how, 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 you know, how, how do I get paid?" He said, "Nah, that ain't how you say it." Then he reenacted. He said, "Yeah, he came up and, and he." He just overdid. He said that I grabbed him in the car. Said, What's up, motherfucker? I get paid up here. <laughs> they all laugh and they all laugh because they all know it's my first time. Just, just, I'm just saying, like, and he said, he, he, he did like, I walked up like this. Yeah, hey, what's up? What's, who the fuck paying people? What? You know, like, I didn't, 
but I did have a little bit of confidence at the first. And um, right. and then they were, they were all laughing and shit. And then uh, and then Fat Doctor, rest in peace. He passed away this year, man. Fat Doctor, uh, he he added the last nail into the coffin. He goes, uh, he said, hold up, hold up, oh, t- Tony. I said, yeah, Tony Woods. He goes, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah, that was you? I'm like, yeah. Said, that was your first time? He said, yes. He said, now listen, do that, what you did tonight, about 500 more times and then come back here with that stupid shit and walked <laughs> off. Man, like, oh, 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 oh. I was like, you motherfucker. Like, boom, it's like, they had already had their laugh, then he banged, hit it with a new laugh. Then, oh man! I go in the back. They they cracking up, laughing. They go in the back again, and I walk back to my ex wife and me, her, and Van. She says, "So what they say?" She said, "Cause they like you, cause they still laughing." I'm like, yeah, yeah, they are laughing. <laughs> they still. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, but the, you know the other funny thing is, she just found out about that maybe about a year or two ago. No true. way, really? Yeah, because so to her, that wasn't my first time. Remember, I had been doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but really, I was at Ladies Night. Oh, my God. There was a, there was a nightclub in town, the Ibex nightclub back then. And they said, uh-huh. they said, they said Thursday night was Ladies Night, so it was packed with women. Yeah, and so <laughs> me, and my, me and my boy Vance just go, you know, because the comedy, I think it started like seven or seven thirty. Yeah, yeah, shit, man. We stayed there to about you know eight thirty because back then the shows went to like one o'clock in the morning. You know, because mm-hmm. comedy was hot, and we she, we leave there, and then you know, bang, get to the club, ah, have a good time, <laughs> and then go and then get home at like two, three o'clock in the morning. She's like, "Wow," I said, "I know the show ran long." She gave me an hour set this time. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so, but yeah, but she, yeah, she's uh, she just found it. She said, "That wasn't your friend, like you know, that was oh. my first. He said, "Well, what was you doing all them times?" <laughs> <laughs> the ladies' night. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! So what an epic first time, and I know. Things started to ramp up after that. I know. I think the next two years you were going that Thursday night, and then the wife yeah, was I, saying, "Oh, go no. ahead." But uh, so I, I started in May, and the same guy, Andy Evans, he had a local cable TV show called The Soul of Comedy. It was on. Um, it was on uh, Howard University Television, pub, Public mm. Access. Back then. In the DC area, no one had like HBO and all that stuff. That was a that was for the outback, I guess. I don't know. And uh, and at the time, me, uh, Warren Hutchison, Martin Lawrence yeah. were like the new little young guns. And he said, "Yeah, I want you to be on my on my show." I'm like, "On TV?" Because it was like, remember Wayne's World? Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a skit about some guys who had a show on public access. Oh, now what year was this, by the way? 86, 87? Six. It's 86. Okay. And, he, okay. and so he he had me, had me, Martin. I'm going to tell you the people who was on it. It was me, Martin Lawrence, uh, uh, Pierre, uh, Warren Hudson. You know Warren Hudson? He's like, he's like a, you know, popular showrunner in, in Hollywood now. He was, yeah. He was oh, damn. Man. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, uh, Tommy Davidson, uh, Fat Doctor Greg, uh, Robin Montague. Uh, that's, yeah. That's anyway, it was, Damn. yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, and I was, and I, and did well, and uh, and that was that was crazy because you know you you at the grocery store, you at somewhere like that, and people go, Yo, what's up? Yeah, are you? And it was perfect because it would always happen. Right when me and my wife was having like a little bit of a tiff, <laughs> we're still having a little bit of a tiff. Somebody oh. would go, "Yo, I just wanted to say 
man, man, you was funny, man. <laughs> Because that's back when people recorded stuff on, on VHS. Recorded, man, we watch you all the time, man. You was the funniest one on the show. Dude, wow. That's then, hilarious. And then after that, you got you got the gig with BAT or BET. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's the, so, uh, let me see. Yeah, a couple of, couple, or like 88? Things, things was kind of rolling. Yeah, a, a couple of, yeah, let me see. A couple of months later is, uh, I was going to, you know, open mic night. Now this time I'm starting to do some things, you know, get little gigs here and there. And I'm like, I'm going to open mic night. And she's like, why are you going? You know, you're not, you're not getting paid. Why are you, why are you, it's just, you know, open mic. I'm like, I just, you know, some, I, and so I went, you know, and uh, that's the night I met this guy named Stu Perkins. And Stu Perkins said, how you doing, man? We really like you, blah, blah, blah. He says, I'm the producer of a show called Tell Me Something Good. It's on uh, Black Entertainment Television. And I said, all right. I took his car. Boom, that was it. And uh, did, you know, uh, did you know about Black Entertainment Television? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was like, get out of here, mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at the time, you know, because because comedy had picked up. I didn't have a job where I made money, but I could just bounce. Cause I was, mm -hmm. so I was a bike messenger then. Damn. And, and so I remember uh, they said, my, my courier number was triple seven, 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 said triple seven, triple seven, give me a landline and you're gonna meet, you know, like another, another guy. He says, you're gonna meet him. You're gonna give him all your packages. I'm like, what? <laughs> like they, I'm giving them all my packages and then he said, give me a landline. So boom, because we, we were working on walkie talkies to so give him a landline. He said, uh, you got an emergency phone call, man. Call your wife right now. I think you got to go home. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. I call her. I call her at work. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm expecting sadness, but she's like, oh, my God, you got to you got to go home right now. Listen, and you're going to wear such and such and such and such. I'm like, what? Huh? What are you talking about? She says. We got a call on on the phone, and they want you at the studio on Duke Street in Alexandria. To, you you're gonna do a TV show today, and look, you're gonna wear the the shirt that I got you, and blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, just like 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 go now. I'm like, what? She's from Black Entertainment Television. Now her family was from down south. My family was from down south. They everybody's got cable, so she knew all about this network. And I'm like, yeah. She said, Stu Perkins called. I'm like, Stu Perkins. She said, from from he's the producer. I'm like, yeah, that joker gave me his car last night. And, and she goes, yeah. She said, B E T. I'm like, okay. She black his name. I'm like, okay. She <laughs> so, <laughs> oh shit. Anyway, anyway, so she says, you know, go, go home now. I'm like, all right. And you know, I used to ride my bike back and from where we live to, to the downtown area where you curry. So mm -hmm. it, would, it would take me maybe like uh, about a half hour, like 20 minutes in the morning coming down, about a half hour going back, you know, and this ain't even the end of the day. So she said, what, what she says, she says, catch a cab. <laughs> so I'm like, like so yeah, so I lock my bike, go to the cab. I'm like, this must be more important than I think it is. And Man. got home. Got home, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's like she had yeah, radar on me because as soon as I walked in, she called me. Like, she said, now, look, look in the closet. You're going to wear this. You're going to wear it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so boom. And uh, yeah. So anyway, went down there and it was a live taping. And boom, the rest is history. Did the show. And I remember did the show. And it was live, not me, not thinking. By the time, by the time I get home, that evening, my mother's phone has been blown up because the whole family is calling her, saying, "Yo, it's, Tony's on television right now." I'm like what? So yeah, that was that was a thing. And then another thing that happened, um, I won a contest for National Lampoon, so they flew me out to Vegas, and that was a, a show where Leslie Nielsen hosted, you know, from Naked Gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was that like, by the way? Yeah, that that was cool. That was another uh that was another experience in my greenness. So 
Because now, imagine, I'm not even a full two years in, and I and I won a contest with all the comedians. Like it was a contest. Like it was, it was the big boys. It was it, it was yeah. But all all you needed was a hot seven minutes, and I killed them with a hot seven minutes. And then uh, and then they picked me to go. I'm like what? So went out there. But anyway, my last name is Woods with a W. So all the comedians from all over the country are there. And we, the, the hotel is not even there anymore. It's called the, uh, the Sahara. Sahara. Mm -hmm. It's a casino mm -hmm. hotel. We get there. Everybody's getting their rooms and everything. And, and then the lady said, boom, you know, we out of regular rooms. So um, and I'm thinking, damn, I'm going to be like in a broom closet or whatever. So yeah. anyway, so she says, this is your key. And this is the card. You have to stick the card nowadays that's that's normal but just you got to stick yeah. the card and get to your floor mm -hmm. I'm like wow mm -hmm. i'm like wow because i'm because alphabetically i'm at the bottom of the list i done got jammed on some bullshit right but anyway i get up to like one of the top floors and you have to open my when you open my room doors two doors and you're like wow look at it it's, you know it's like uh it's just dope it's got a piano full bar it's oh. big overlooking Vegas, it was the bomb. And then, but they tell you, okay, we, all comedians have to be down by poolside for your interview at such and such time, right? So, mm -hmm. and all these guys, most of the guys who won are working comedians. They're on the circuit already. Like, I'm one of the newer guys, probably the yeah. newest. And, and then, and, you know, everybody's talking. Of course, doing comedy talk. Oh yeah, you work there, you know the bartender, you know the waitress. Ah, you know they tell their little road stories, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or you know, like just road stories because everybody's a, a road. Yeah. Comedy. And um, and and we were talking, and they were talking about uh, what they were gonna do later or whatever. Like, and I don't know, we got on the subject of the rooms, and I was like, yo, I said the rooms, yeah, yeah. and they go, like one of them go, you from DC? I'm like, yeah. They go, oh yeah. You just, yeah, so you, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm, at that time, I was, I was doing some gigs, but it was like, you know, go weekend. It was, it, everything I had done at that time, I could drive and, you know. Ah, uh, it wasn't like <laughs> on the road, going cross country. Yeah, it wasn't like working at a comedy club. I was doing comedy nights, mm. stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like, we got a hot Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, something, you know, doing, yeah, you know, or like the, you know, and uh, and I was so impressed with the hotel, and it, you, it, which led into another story how they were talking about like going to small towns, and you take a girl, and she's like, "Ooh, like I love a hotel room, like that." Like, they got, <laughs> yeah, they were kind of making fun of me about my greenness about a hotel. Hmm. How about those oh. hotel? Yeah, like how about those <laughs> hotel? Like, yeah. It's like, All right. So anyway, you do the interview, blah blah blah. blah. We're hanging out, and. Um, yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, what happened? Oh, yeah, I had a, I had a chip. Yeah, I had a, I had a, uh, I had a, I had a twenty dollar chip, and uh, I'm like, because we all went to the casino. I'm like, I'm like, yo, did you get, did you get? I'm like, what does this do? Like this, your chip? This because they they got one of my pillows, a chocolate on one pillow, and a twenty dollar chip on the other pillow, and they were like. They were like, well, somebody probably dropped it. They, you know, one of the guys, <laughs> somebody probably dropped that in your room, stupid. Like that. But anyway, gamble. Yeah. And that was the worst thing that could happen because guess what I did on my first time gambling? I won. Not cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I won about eighty dollars. And I'm like, I'm walking away. Fuck that. Like then they were like, no, dude, you're just the beginning. Nah, I'm walking away. Oh. So anyway, we're hanging out and it's and we, uh, what, what I, I don't know what, what was going on, but we went to one of the comedian's rooms. I think he was going to get a camera or something like that because we were going to walk around. And I'm mm -hmm. going to the room. I'm like, hmm. Because it was just a room. It was a, it was a bed. It was a bed. And it was like this, a room. Nobody yeah. dropped any chocolates or chips on, yeah. on his pillows. Yeah, no, uh -uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, I, and I had to get something out of my room. Or whatever. I think probably a camera. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. that's a good idea. So I'm like, yo, we gotta go up to my room, and they get on the elevator, and I go, 
I stick the key in. And they're like, yeah. And then we go up and they're like, wow. Like everybody's like, wow. Because on my floor, it's all double doors. So, so it's all double doors. We, and then go to my room like, and, and they're like, you know, and they're like conspiracy, like, who do you know? You know like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, who is this guy? Who, yeah. is, who the fuck is this guy? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, and, and in, in that room, everything that's in my refrigerator and bar was, yeah, it was mine. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, and they, and they like, ah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, they like, what in the fuck? You know, because, oh yeah, because, uh, you know, there's a little thing that, you know, enjoy it, you're sweet, and blah, blah, blah. This is complimentary, and they're like, dude, like, you know, it was like water, soda, some beers, some, those little bottles of wine, the little airport liquors. All that shit. Of course, they fucking blasted through that shit. <laughs> yeah. They were like, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. that's such a good time. But it was because I was last on the list. Oh my God. But yeah. But anyway, we did the show and I did, I did rip. But, but the, uh, the little going around like, like this, like just don't, don't listen to this guy when he says he's. <laughs> Everyone's scared of you now. <laughs> scared of me now. Nobody's my friend no more. Like, yeah, <laughs> bullshit walking around like, oh, this is my friend. I just started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, That's it's, amazing. They're like, this guy's, oh. they know, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I was actually, I wanted to ask you too, before we get into uh, further in your career, I was going to ask around that time. I know that there were a lot of headliners and a lot of, once you get like up to the top on TV, et cetera, there was more cursing that's allowed. But I was going to ask, what was the perception of cursing if you're at uh, smaller gigs or just, uh, you know, shows that are less wide? Is it, was it less well, common? It's, it's, okay, but what, what I didn't understand then was, and they still do it now, like with younger comedians, they say, hey, no dirty, no this, no that, no this. Now I understand. It's because most comedians newer are in their early 20s, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they're younger. Yeah. But the, the audience, the people who come out for a night of entertainment, stuff like that, are usually grown people. They're like yeah. over, over 35, over 40. So yeah. and for some people, it's like, you don't want to fucking sit there and watch your kids curse and talk about sex and stuff like that. Because I noticed like the older comics, they could do what they wanted to do. They, you know, they, cause boom, because they were grown ups, and now I understand that, you know, they, they were, you know, so. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Of, yeah, but uh, back then there was a guy named David E. Hardy. Mm -hmm. David E. Hardy was from Philadelphia and and shit, he was dirty shit, always cursing, uh, you know, and stuff like that. It, not always talking about sex, but always using profanity. But yeah. David e. was like a grown ass man. He was like in his late fifties, maybe even early sixties. You know what I'm saying? No, no, yeah. nobody dared tell him that, you know, cause he was a grown ass man. And it was, and he would have the audience falling out. Whereas you would see, a younger comedian go up there and they go, this guy is just too dirty. Because now I understand, you know, he was a grown man. One of his yeah. jokes, he used to wear a three-piece suit. He said, yeah, you know why I wear this? He said, because I probably picked most of the cotton in this motherfucker like that. <laughs> so he established himself off the top as not, not a grown man, a grown black man who done been through a lot of shit. So fuck you. I'm saying what I want to say. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And he, that's, yeah. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. I, I also wanted to, I, you know, just observing your comedy and thinking about your story about how you were afraid to go up for almost three years. And then you go up. Oh, sorry. No, don't worry about it. Um, um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Just going to ask. So 
um, with somebody being afraid to go up on stage for almost three years going up and then seeing your comedy and how, I mean, you're so versatile. You can be just laid back telling jokes hilarious you can also bring the energy i was just watching the bit where you were talking about getting in a fight on the subway because a lady sneezed and a booger got on your shirt and then you were talking about getting in a fight with the operator but he's got a little arm and yeah. uh, he ended up getting the better of you but the, the the animation in that and almost feeling like i was there with all the swings and the punches and everything and you describing it was just so great and it's so interesting to see somebody that was afraid to go up on stage is just super animated and just really bringing it all for stuff that is is just super funny and silly and and hilarious well i think back then i had a lot a lot more energy kind of stand <laughs> you just got tired over the years now <laughs> that could you yeah, I, I think about that yeah that's ooh, that's a workout that joke right there is a workout you gotta fight you gotta do this you got i said yeah Oh man. Yeah. And then compared to some of your, your later stuff, where it's just, I, I don't yeah. lower energy, but still just as funny. I remember a bit that I was watching about how you were talking about going to Scotland and, um, and, uh, just talking about, yeah, this is where white people are made. This is like yeah, white like, people's Africa. <laughs> that yeah, was like, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. This, this is where they make white people. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Cause it was, it, it went back to, um, like, uh, I said, there's, you know, three questions from black people travel, you know, um, you, you got a place to stay, you got, you got enough to eat, you know, or something. Then it, I said, and the third one's always whispered for whatever reason, like, there's gonna be a lot of white people. Like that. <laughs> you know, which, cause there's a, there's a special on PBS now, it's called Driving While Black. And it's, it just talks about like the precautions that, you know, that, that black people had to take while traveling. And yeah. from growing up and listening to, to grown ups, you know, mm -hmm. and they go, how was it? You, you know, y'all y'all have enough food? Y'all have a place to stay? You know, did y'all have extra gas tank? And, you know, shit like, which I didn't yeah. understand the weight of these questions back then. Mm. But, but in that joke, to, to some people it looked like a, a silly little joke, but I said that the last question is always whispered like, you know, like basically, are you safe, motherfucker? Yeah, are yeah. You <laughs> so, you know, yeah. if you're in a strange place, are you safe? That's that is what is going on yeah. in that in that joke. And um, and, and I say, and I explain to him like, you know, what? I feel a lot of white mother. Like this is there. This is where they make them. The fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And um, and then I go into the joke part, which is there's not just white people, but they got orange people too yeah because, that was hilarious yeah because i was in scotland man ain't, ain't nothing but we had people in scotland like god damn like the first time i we went to scotland me it was me ian edwards sumi mccullough uh mm -hmm. renee renee hicks uh dave chappelle uh forgot who else anyway but i just remember going wow like wow <laughs> like whoo like <laughs> She's like, well, I've never, I'm, you know what? Come think of, I've never seen because they're always white. See somebody, oh yeah, they're redhead. But it's like, God damn, like, this, damn. <laughs> yeah. It was funny it was, too because you were saying something like, yeah, so many red. You thought they were gonna catch on fire. They were so red. Yeah. Which <laughs> yeah, because it was like, it was like, yeah, and just you just don't see that and yeah that often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was just it was just basically it was uh. It was a, it was a young traveler through the eyes of a young traveler, and, and what he see, you know, wasn't wasn't being a uh, racist and nothing like that. It was just right, being, right. Like, like wow, look at this, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like Gulliver, you know, Gulliver and his travels, you know. He could say right. he, he could say I went to an island and everybody was a midget. They said they don't say midget, say little people. They say, well, I'm just telling you, they were like really small <laughs> that was his observation so i guess that's how i looked at it that that's hilarious and i'll ask just one more question then we'll just finish off the pod with a little bit of advice but uh, i was also going to ask and pointing on you going to scotland you also i think it was right after 
Comedy Central, you were on Comedy Central and you had special there and then they had you perform in Australia and you've been there a bunch of times. You've been all over the world. Um, but what, the, the, go ahead. the Scott, Scott thing happened in 1993. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, so the, that was before. I think that, is it 2000 or 2001? It's one of the two. two uh, the, the, yeah, what? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say too, and I and I heard you on another podcast saying that the Comedy Central was giving you a lot of guidance or like the list of what to say, what not to say, controlling your set. I think you were also with Tom Papa and Zach Galifianakis, and you go back and you're like, All yeah, right. man, they're really strict, and they're like, what? Yeah, because uh, but, yeah, I mean, because you have to go through it, man. It's like, you know, they do this, do that. And like like right. some of my key jokes, they would say, "Oh, you know what? We like that, but we want you to instead of saying that word, say this word." Like, All right. Huh? All right, cool, right? And uh, so they, I guess they're sitting out there like, "This is what he's gonna say." Mm. <laughs> I came, I came out there like Hannibal Lecter, son. You know, <laughs> you know how they brought Hannibal Lecter out on the thing like this, like that's so like, there's no way this motherfucker can escape. Kill that, yeah, okay. <laughs> But boom, I just went out there, just did some different shit, you know. She wanted to be mad. I think she wanted to be mad, but I fucking, I killed. So she was like, <laughs> she's like, this, that's, did, you did something different. I'm like, yeah. She said, but I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what you wanted to hear. And I was like, I was like saying, you, you wrote those jokes. Because I would never say that instead of that. So that's, that's your joke. Right. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's important because I feel like the, if you get this type of, you should say this instead of that, that types that just robs the joke of its humor at, at some yeah. point, because I feel like words are specifically chosen to pack that comedic punch. Yeah. So anyway, and I, I was like, you're not a comedian. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You Did know, you, I'm trying to, and I, I think, you know, but I say things in a joking manner, but I, I mean it. Cause it was like, you know, right. Cause I was, I should, I'm like, I should have picked you to do a uh, special. <laughs> oh shit. Did you yeah. get any flack for it from them or? I think they wanted to be mad. The, like, it's like, it's like they wanted to be mad, but the, but, but the theater was going nuts. So they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they want to be mad because you know like uh like because you oh, know I get backstage like this is not this is not what we this is because it was even on the monitor my shit was on the monitor oh <laughs> my god i look at the monitor it's like my shit was rolling up like i was with guns and roses it was songless like nah, i'm not i'm not singing that tonight no. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing uh well tony Thank you so much. It's, it's been awesome. We're going to just top it off with a couple of questions that some fans sent in and then, okay. uh, and then we'll be on our way, but it's been awesome to, to learn about you. Funny stories, uh, very insightful stories. Very cool. And I can't wait to see you at house of comedy. I was going to ask, do you have anything that you want to plug? What have you got going on? Um, where can people follow you? I don't know. I have a, I have a, I have a podcast. It's uh, it's called the first episode again with Tony Woods, and um, you can get it on YouTube. I think. That's right. We didn't even cover that, but you you and yeah. three coasts, and uh, you cover various topics like what's trending, and uh, it's a it's a really nice podcast. Thank you. Like we don't yeah. interview people; we just talk. Yeah. I think the last episode talking about a little bit about uh, what was it, Fifty Cent and Ice Cube, and their stance, political stances. It was. It's a. Uh, I, I like the coasts on it as well. They add a yeah. little flavor to it. <laughs> Is it supposed to be like just just four people sitting there talking who all have a different, you know, from a different angle? Uh, I see. Why did you guys end up choosing a bar? Because I thought that was unique. Yeah, because, well, we got the guy in the back who's supposed to be like a bartender because we're supposed to be having a conversation about this and about that. And we're just at, at the bar where people feel comfortable. 
That's beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'll put that and the, uh, I'll go ahead. Most open conversations. I don't know about those uh those couches when people yeah, but at a bar, that's you're gonna hear the truth. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, I'll put that and everything else in the show notes so people can just click on there, follow you, watch the podcast, everything else. Um, all right, we're gonna top it off with some questions. This one came in from our fan Steven and he found it on Reddit. It says <clears throat> My grandma does nothing but watch TV all day. What is a hobby or something I can help her get into? She used to sew and stuff, but she can't really see anymore, so she can't walk too well either. When I'm at home from school, I take her on walks around the lake, but I'm only home for a short bit every few months. I feel shitty knowing she is literally just watching game shows day in and day out. Is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, because uh, my mother watches a lot of uh, but she watch uh, Family Feud, but then she watches 90 Day Fiance. So, <laughs> oh shit, really? Oh my god, that's for older people. It's like a conversation, like, oh, why does she do that? Oh, you know, she knows she's wrong. So, it's like it's interactive television, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And but he still needs to go take her for walks, yeah. Yeah, I think walks are important. I yeah. think, and, if and that's she, not painting te television for him. But for older people, they love that stuff because they can give their advice to, to the people, even though the people can't hear. That's you a good know. idea. You know what? Maybe grandma should start a podcast. That way she can give advice to anyone and then maybe people will, will hear her. We could call it Ask Granny or something and then she has yeah. something to do. That's what's up. All right, cool. We've got our last question. This is sent in from Candace and it says, how do I confront my girlfriend about her best friend? So this is a guy, he says, my girlfriend tells her best male friend about everything. When she and I first got sexual, she told him about it. When she sent me a funny test about kink, she shared my results with him. And then he sent me a joke about it. I don't know what to say, but I feel like she tells him too much. Should I confront her or am I being too clingy and jealous? No, no. Yeah, confront both of them at the same time. Say, stop that shit. <laughs> Agre agreed. Agreed. Also, yes. don't don't take tests about kinks. You keep that to yourself or to yourself and your partner. You don't have to do a, an online quiz to say that you like handcuffs or whatever. So, because yeah, basically, those two sit around and laugh and talk about you. You, so you need to cut both of them off. I agree. Yeah, let them find a new subject. Let them find a, a new subject. So, yeah, exactly <laughs> done. Cold turkey. Uh -huh. Awesome. Well, Tony, this has been an absolute blast. Thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. Um, and I think- Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, hey, good luck tonight in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and can't wait to see you in Phoenix. At the House of Comedy, yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, take care, Tony. Um, uh, I don't know which show I'm going to catch, but- I, I really, my wife and I are going to go see you. So I'm really excited about it. I'll be waiting for you. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Take care, man. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right.